Uh, we're here with Anthony Gian Domenico, who's a senior security strategist and researcher at Fortinet FortiGuard Labs. <laughs> Tony G. Hey, thanks for having me today, Peter. Good to see you again. So, so Tony G, you spend a lot of time talking to a lot of users, a lot of other professionals, you're doing a lot of research on issues. Give us a quick snapshot. Give us the quick snapshot. What's the state of security today? Yeah, well, you know, I think, um, I mean, there's a lot of things that are happening right now, I think, in the, um, you know, cyber world. You know, one um, that, uh, you know, a lot of us already know is we have a huge skill shortage. We just don't have enough, you know, folks, you know, to be able to, you know, defend our cyber assets. Um, you know, and I think the other thing is, um, you look at, you know, some of the mid-tier organizations, maybe a thousand users or so, um, they don't have those skilled resources. And what happens is, they had, you know, they end up, you know, relying on different types of technology to help fill that skills gap, and that's good. But what they need to also make sure is that they really have an overarching, good, solid security program that takes into consideration technology controls, right? So you're buying these, you know, specific products, but also what are the processes and what are the actual kind of people that are involved, and are you actually combining all of those to encompass a solid good cybersecurity program. Yeah, a guy, a bad guy who launches a ransomware attack on a mid-sized company uh, may be a little bit disappointed they're not able to get $10 million, but they'll be pretty happy with a million or $500,000. That's a good day's work for these guys. Yeah, it's low-hanging fruit, Peter, right? I mean, it's, it's much easier, and I think that's the sweet spot for the bad guys, right? Because if you go too high, sometimes it's too much effort. You go too low, you're not really getting much. But in the middle, you know, you're getting a decent amount, and a lot of times they don't have that strong cybersecurity program. Now, I always tell um, you know a lot of my customers in that in that you know sweet spot, forget about protecting and monitoring everything. It's not going to happen. You you will fail 100% of the time. However, if you focus on what are the key assets, what are those um, I don't know five six you know business critical processes. Understand the assets that those processes ride over. Focus on protecting those. Everything else is ancillary because you, this is all that really matters you know, to the business. The other thing I would say, Peter, and I think this is a mindset change. Um, you know, if I'm, a, if I'm a, um, a, a security professional and I'm responsible for you know, protecting my cyber assets, and um, if I'm being um, measured on whether there's a breach in my network or not. So if there is a breach, I fail. That has to go away because you will fail every single time. That's not the way you should be measured. You should be measured on, hey, we quickly identified something in the network, we isolated it, we mitigated, we got everything back up and running, and we're back up and running as, you know, as normal, minimize the actual damage. That's how, how I would be actually, or should be graded on. So, just, this is an important point, Tony G. So what we're saying is that the real metrics associated with this should be the degree to which you can mitigate problems, not whether or not you are 100% clear of everything, because the bad guys are going to find their way at some point in time. They got happen. enough time to do it, and you don't. So, like, if you can quickly identify when they are in the network, isolate it, minimize the damage, and get your business processes back up and running, that's a win. Well, it's one of the things you mentioned is you mentioned for your cybersecurity or your cyber assets, uh, which by itself is not an easy thing necessarily to, to measure. It's hard to say that this cyber asset's worth that and that cyber asset's worth that. But we do have to take some effort, we have to make some effort to understand the risks mm. associated with sure. cyber, and you know, whether it's an opportunity cost or whether it's what the replacement cost is, whatever else it might be. But it also suggests that historically we invest in assets to appreciate the value of those assets. Should security be regarded as an asset that's part of, or cybersecurity, should that be regarded as the part of the asset base of the business? What do you think? Oh, you know, absolutely. I mean, you, you definitely, um, you know, as a consumer or, or as someone who's interested in looking at an actual business, I think that's a key asset to make sure that your information is actually being protected. And, and I, honestly, I don't think it always is. Um, you know, we, we have these regulations that are tied to kind of making sure, um, for example, if, if, if you're storing um, you know, customer credit cards, you know, there's PCI and there's all these other now, you know, HIPAA regulations and all that type of stuff. But um, those regulations still don't seem to be enough. And yeah, they're due. 
I think the minute that you can turn. Let me, but let me stop. You mean it's not enough, and it appears that enterprises generally continue to underinvest in their cybersecurity assets. Yeah. Is that kind of what you mean? Yeah, I still think it's a, it's a checkbox. You know, you, you, okay, I am compliant. Okay, you know, that's enough, right? Because I bet you there are companies out there that will just invest, that they'll put a certain money aside knowing that they're going to get breached and use that money, you know, to be able to pay for the breach or, you know, whatever else they have to do to meet those regulations instead of investing into the actual technology to fortify their environment a lot better. Well, at Wikibon, we are doing research on related types of things all the time, and we're just fascinated by the idea that if a business is going after greater flexibility and agility, mm. a crucial element of that has to be, do you have a cybersecurity profile yeah. that allows you to take advantage of those opportunities, that allow you to connect mm. with those partners, that allows you to set up more mm. intimate relations with a, with, a, with a big customer. And it just seems as though that's something that's probably it has to become an explicit feature of the conversation about what are our strategic assets. Yeah, I definitely, you know, I totally agree. Um, and that, that kind of, you, know, you know, stirs up something in my head about um, cyber insurance. Um, I, you know, I think a lot of companies are also moving towards, okay, well, let me just kind of buy some cyber insurance. Um, and in the beginning, they would go ahead and they would buy those things, but what they would quickly find out is, um, they wouldn't be able to, you know, reap the money on an actual breach because they were out of compliance because right. they didn't have the good cybersecurity program they were supposed to have. Yeah, the insurance company always finds a way to not pay. <laughs> but let's talk now about this notion of greater agility. Mm. Uh, we talked about the, the role that security or crypto security, cybersecurity could play in businesses as they transform in the digital world. We've seen a lot of developers starting to enter into cloud native cloud development, you know, new ways of integrating, that requires a mindset shift in the development world about what constitutes security. Now, everybody knows, we're not just talking about perimeter, we're talking about something different. But what is it are we talking about? Are we talking about how the security is going to move with the data, how the security is going to be embedded in the API? What do developers have to do differently, or how, what, how do they have to think differently yeah. to make sure that they are building stuff that yeah. makes the business more secure. Yeah. Well, even before you even start talking about the cloud or, any, or anything else, I think we still have an issue um, when we're building our applications, the developers still, I don't think, are up to speed enough mm. on practicing good, secure coding. And I think we're still playing catch up to that. Now, what you just said, I mean, think about where we're at now, you know, we're not even sort of there. Now you're going to expand that out into the cloud. It's only going to amplify the actual problem. So that there's definitely going to be a lot of challenges that, you know, we're going to have to actually face. And then you think, you know, we talked about this a little offline before is, you know, where's your data going to be? It's going to be everywhere. You know, how are you going to be able to secure all that particular data? And I think that's going to be a lot of challenges that, you know, you know, face ahead of us, and you know, we're going to, have to figure out how to deal with it. And the last thing I want to talk about, Tony G, is uh, the a lot of the applications that folks are going to be building. A lot of the things that the developers are going to be building are things that increasingly provide or, or bring a degree of automation mm. to bear. So think about it: if you got bad cybersecurity uh, or bad crypto. Secure, at cybersecurity, you may not know when you're, you've been breached or when you've been hacked or when you've been compromised. You definitely don't want to find out because you got some automation thing that's going on that starts spinning out of control and doing everything wrong because of a security breach. What's the relationship between increasing automation and the need for a uh, more focus and attention on, on cybersecurity? Yeah. Well, Usually when I talk about automation, I end up talking about how the bad guys are leveraging automation. You know, I'll give you a little bit of a, an example here. Um, in our FortiGuard labs, uh, uh, I think last quarter we saw about, um, I think it was over a million exploits, uh, or at least exploit attempts that we were thwarting in one minute. The volume of the attack are so large these days, and it's really coming from the cybercrime ecosystem. So, you know, the human cannot actually deal with handling all those different threats out there. So they need to figure out a way to be able to fight automation with automation. And that's really the key. And I, you know, I had mentioned this earlier on before, is what happens is you have to make sure that your technology controls are talking to each other, uh, right? So they can actually take some automated action. Because, you know, 
as far as you're concerned as a um, you know, security you know, uh, you know, operator working in a SOC, no matter how good you are, the process for you to identify something, uh, you know, analyze it, and take action on it, it's going to be a couple hours you know, sometimes. You know, sometimes it's a little, bit, you know, a little bit faster, but just a couple hours. It's way too late by then because that threat could spread all over the place. You need those machines to make some of those actual decisions for you. And that's where you start to hear a lot about you know, all these buzzwords about artificial intelligence, you know, machine learning, you know, big data analytics. We're really diving into now and you know, trying to figure out how can the machines help us make these automated decisions for us. But as you increase the amount of automation, you, increase, you dramatically expand the threat surface mm -hmm. for the number of things that could suddenly be compromised and taken over as a bad actor. They themselves are more connected it just, it just makes this whole problem, it just amplifies the whole problem, doesn't it? Yeah, it gets more complicated. So the co more, um, a system that's more complex is less secure. Yeah, yeah. more vulnerable, certainly. The more vulnerable, absolutely. All right, so once again, once again, Tony G, thanks for being here. So we've been speaking on this CUBE conversation with Anthony Giamendic, G <laughs> Giamendico. Uh, who's uh, at Fortinet with the Fortinet uh, FortiGuard uh, Labs. He's a security analyst and researcher. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks. Thanks for having me.